Heritage Day. I'm going to call uh, my daughter Zianda, who will speak to people as God's heritage. Let's put our hands together for this wonderful ministry. King Saints, in the wonderful name of Jesus, um, I would like to greet my father and my mother, who is not here with us, and the leadership of the church. Um, thank you. Thank you, Daddy, for this opportunity. Even though it's very scary. But around it's not easy. All right, my time is very short. I will talk about people, that people have valued heritage to God and qualify for riches of grace. Uh, I will start with us as Christians. If we, we can read Psalm 95 verse 4. Psalms 95 verse 4. The depths of the earth are in his hand, and the mountain peaks are his. Can we continue to the next verse, please? The sea is his. He made it. His hands formed the dry land. That is the greatness of our God. He is no ordinary God. We cannot be familiar with him. We can never be too. He is too big. He is beyond our comprehension. If we can read also Ephesians 1, verse 18. Ephesians 1, verse 18, please. Uh, this is Paul's prayer to the Ephesus. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, so you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the glorious riches of his inheritance among the saints. Let us underline the latter part there. Then we go to Joel 2, verse 17. Let the priests, the Lord's ministers, weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, have pity on your people, Lord, and do not make your inheritance a disgrace, an object of scorn among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Bazalwane, as Christians, we are not ordinary beings. I just looked as we're celebrating here the uniqueness of our heritage. To God, you are unique. To God, you are unique. You are God's treasured possession. If you read first, uh, Peter 2 verse 9 God calls you a chosen generation God calls you that you are royalty I have come to deliver the too good to be true news those news I understand right now that to many of us they are beyond our comprehension you don't see yourself as God's treasured possession right now because of your mind your mind is hindering you. And yet you are born again. You are born again in your spirit. You are royalty. You are kings and priests to God. You are anointed. You are blessed. You are blessed, the child of God. It is your truth. I just wish we can comprehend this truth. I just wish that as the body of Christ, people will not mock you. That you will not be a disgrace. I don't think we fully understand what it means to be God's heritage. God came himself, himself in this world. He died. He died like a sinner. In his eyes, you are not a sinner. He destroyed the dominion of sin over your life. You cannot be held hostage by sin. Child of God, it is time today. I'm here to remind you. I'm here to tell you this too good to be true news. That do not let sin have dominion over you. Jesus destroyed the power of sin over your life. 
What Christ has set free is free indeed. You are free in Christ Jesus. You are royalty. You are a king and a prince to God. You are no ordinary being as a Christian. Refuse to succumb to the pressures of this world. Refuse to be limited by what the world says about you. Rise up, child of God. Stand up today. Don't forget this message. Go, insist on the word of God. Read the word of God. Find out what is it that God says about you. He says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He says you are the able of his eye. You are the able of God's eye. Oh, Basalwan, you don't understand this. And yet it's imperative that we insist on the word of God. We dig deep on the word of God. We don't listen to social media. We don't listen to the limitations of this world. It doesn't matter what calamities are befalling this world. You are not part of it. Yes, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Bazalwane, this world is three-dimensional. But you, as a child of God, you are four-dimensional being. You are far superior than this world. You are greater than this world. Don't let it dictate and limit you. I don't care what is your position right now. But don't let your current circumstances decide your destiny. Let God decide your destiny. You are powerful. You are not ordinary beings. You are extraordinary. You've got favor with God and with men. Hallelujah, Bazalwan. Oh, that God will open your eyes. That God will open your eyes. That he will open your eyes. That you will see. You will see the riches of his grace. That you are his glorious inheritance. That you are a peculiar nation. Hallelujah, Bazalwan. Hallelujah. Um, if we can also read Deuteronomy 4, verse um, 15. I'm not sure if it's verse 15 or 20. Deuteronomy 4. Oh, I think it's verse 20. But the Lord had taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as you are this day. God has drawn you out of the world. God has pulled you out of the world. God has set you apart. You are set apart. You are set apart for God. He has drawn you from this world. Now you belong to him. You ought to live as such. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. Do not behave as the world behaves. When everything comes into this world, you are also participating. No, child of God. Do not forget where you come from. Your citizenship is from the heavens. You are a heavenly citizen in this earth. Oh, I wish we can, that, 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 that can become our truth and we can walk as such. Hallelujah, Bazalwane. Hallelujah, coming to people. People, all people are special to God. God sees people as heritage, as the church, as the body of Christ, this royalty. We ought to see people the way God sees them. We ought to be compassionate towards people. Do not despise that which God loves. Do not despise what God loves the most. You came in this world to serve. Serve humanity. Serve your generation. Serve. Who Paul says in Philippians 2, if we can go there, Philippians 2, verse 16. I love that. Can you go to the next verse, please? But even if I'm poured out as a drink offering, as the sacrifice, 
and service of, of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. Paul was willing to pour out his life, to die for his generation. He was willing to pour out his life. Are you that Christian today who is willing to pour out his life for Jesus, the Lord who came, who was not a sinner, but he died like a sinner on that cross? Are you willing to serve him? Are you willing to serve him with your life? Are you willing to send him to serve him with your resources? Are you willing to allow God to spend you, all of you, that when you die and leave this earth, you will be empty because God would have used you so much and not used you only as a local, but as a global champion to draw many unto God. Hallelujah, Bazalwan. Are you willing? Are you willing? As a believer, that God use me as I come here today. Help me to perceive people the way that you perceive them. Do not allow my eyes, oh God, to see people as trees. You remember the story when Jesus Christ healed that blind man. But when he asked him, can you see? He said he sees trees. He saw people as trees. But Jesus did it again. And that man started, started to see people as people. Are you going to ask God today that God open my eyes? That I don't see your heritage as trees. Hallelujah, Master Luan. That God today, you will help me to love people the way that you love them. Bazalwane, we give up on people so easily, on our families. We don't have this love of Christ. It's easy for us to give up on people. But if you went to God and asked God, God, so and so, how do you see them? How do you view them? How do you perceive them? Help me. My boss is troublesome. But God, how do you see this person? Help me not to see him as a tree, but give me your sight. Give me your sight, oh God. God today is reminding us that people are his heritage. He sent Jesus. If you read John 3, 6, 16, it says, if we can go there, John 3, verse 16, that for God so loved the world, not just believers. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Are you willing to give your life for Jesus? Are you willing to serve in that institution where you are, in that high school, in that school where you are? Are you willing to serve? Are your peers, your teachers, your friends going to see Christ in you, the hope of glory? They don't know me. Are you that kind? When you go to your workspace, are you serving God there? Are people seeing Christ in you, in that position where you are? What are people seeing? Are they seeing this God? Are we demonstrating this God in different spheres of our operation, in our families? Are you drawing people to God? Hallelujah, Bazalwan. I am here to remind you today that value what God values, and that is people. God's, uh, they are God's valued heritage. Serve humanity as unto the Lord. Serve them with fear and reverence. See people the way God sees them. Don't give up on people. Keep praying for them. Don't use people. Desire to add value to people's life. Don't despise what God does not despise. Love people genuinely and purely without expecting anything in return. Amen. My name is Uayan Damazirisa. I am a born again child of God and I'm a child of this house. Amen. Um, we bless God for the word. We bless God for this Heritage Sunday. Hallelujah. Uh, we are just going to quickly turn to Psalm 127. 
the basis of my uh, uh, my basis of my exhortation today is in verse three, but I'd like to start from verse one. Amen. And in Zofunda Ngaleli Bibelam, praise the Lord. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you raise early, you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Amen. Lord, thank you for your word. We pray this morning that it may fall on fertile ground. We pray that, Lord, you may part your spirit and that you may minister your word yourself this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we understand the heritage to mean uh, in this context and uh, as a gift. We understand it as something that is a blessing from God as an inheritance, as Mfundis has uh, eloquently explained it to us. So an inheritance is something that uh, is not a fruit of one's labor. You don't labor for it, but it is a gift from a loving father. Hallelujah, Bazalwan. So today we are talking about children as that what God has blessed us and we do not do anything to deserve or anything to qualify us for it. Amen. It is important to note in the first two verses, uh, Solomon is talking about uh, Uti and then <coughs> those who labor unless the Lord builds a house. He understands. He's a man who knows how to build a house. He understands the importance of, 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 of laying guard of a city. He understands the importance of security. He understands the importance of, of everything that causes a house to be safe and for the people who live in a city to be in a secure place. So it doesn't take it for granted that those things are needed. Amen. But we find him saying that if you do it without God, you are laboring in vain. We, we find him saying that if you are waiting and you have sleepless nights because you are toiling, which is all well and good, it's needed, but it is in vain if God is not in it. Hallelujah. Uh, it, it is true as Abba, Abba Zalwan and Abba Zali that <coughs> when we, 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 we get older and the Lord blesses us, it is in our is it is in our instinct as parents to provide. Praise be to God. It is in our instinct to work hard, to provide a future, to provide a heritage that our parents did not were and not able to provide for us. Hallelujah. And most of the time those things are, are, are materialistic things. Hallelujah. In as much as all of that is good, but what we need to understand and I feel that the word is emphasizing here is that all of those things if you, are comp if you are compensating those things for the word of God, you are not doing any good to your children. Amen. It is God who helps you to build. He is the one who gives you the ability to create wealth. Amen. And it is the heritage that the children are the heritage that he has given to us. in our children. It is our responsibility then as parents to groom that, that the, her the inheritance that God has given us. Thing I find it with the talents that the man that had one talent and then two took it and went 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 kibanga panskom sabat. And when the, uh, the the king or the the leader came to ask Kubuti, what did you do? He said, No, I took it and I buried it. Can we cultivate the inheritance that the Lord has given us? Hallelujah, Bazalwan. The Bible says uh, in the book of. Uh, uh, I'm just going to share a few things that can assist us or to, to help us to value what the Lord has, has, has given us. Amen. In the book of, in the verse, uh, two verse 3, Uti, children are a heritage from the Lord, offsprings a reward from him. Amen. What do we do with these rewards that the Lord has given us? It is important that after we have provided for them, we as parents have fellowship with our children. Hallelujah. It is true that we don't want to expose our children to a father who is a provider only but does not have a relationship with our children. Amen. Lead by example as umzal. Children learn through observation. Others often, uh, so when, we, when you are a parent, it is very important to lead the Christ life that you want your children to lead. Amen. Do not just tell them about Jesus, but show them. Because one, one thing about a child, one, before they are born again, one, what they know of Jesus is what they see in their father and their mother. 
Amen. So if we want our children to lead a godly life, they must see it at home. They must see it through us. The book of Titus 2, verse 7, <coughs> it says, In everything, make yourself an example of God's work with integrity and dignity in your teachings. Amen. Show your faith, <coughs> share your faith with your child, children through, through, sorry, through scripture. Amen. Study scripture with your children. Be a person who dissect, dissects the Israelites. Let them not hear it here and there, but let them understand it from, the, from your mouth as a parent. Amen. The book of Psalm, verse, Psalm verse 119, verse 11 says, I have treasured your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Amen. So the word of God, our children are going to keep in, in their hearts, are going to, it's going to be the word that we as parents have instilled in them. Amen. Pray with your children. It's important to teach Inga Nezako to pray. You pray with them in ev every day. You pray them practically, teach them so that they understand who God is through, the pr through prayers. There was a time uh, in my life when I had uh, struggles in university and there was literally when you have cried so much and you don't understand what you needed something practical to hold. I, re I realized right then there and there would stay, there's nothing that I know. I eco, there's no sage that I can go to. I've never been taught that at home. I eco, any, there's no one that I can consult. The only person that has answers for me is prayer. And I trust, trust me with this one. If you plant prayer to your children at an early age, even when they're not away from, if they're away from you, they will never depart from it. Amen. They will never have any other options but the word of God that you have put in them and the prayers that you have prayed for them. Amen. And with them. Hallelujah. Help them to serve others. Hallelujah. Help your children to serve others. Let them not be self-centered children. Let them not be children who think of what they can have and what they have, but let them think about the people as well. Lucy Zianda has spoken about that. We started as young as they are in the name of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 42, the Bible says, call us to give. It says, uh, call us to give to those who ask for, of you and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you. They must know that we are that we are also called to care for the poor. They must know that we are called to, to, to care for the sick and to attend to the needy. Hallelujah. Allow them to have their own faith. Praise be to Jesus. Have a, a, a relationship with them where you grow them. You do not feed them, but you make them understand that they are their own individuals in Christ. Hallelujah. It is very important to to, to make them be the willing participants in the house of God, be willing participants in the relationship they have with Jesus. So as they grow, Bazalwane, let us help them, channel them, lead them, and guide them, and help them make their own choices with regards to faith. Let us lead them to Christ. Let them willingly choose to love Jesus. Let them willingly want to be in the house of God and to be born again. Amen. And sometimes you'll find that they have doubts in Ghana, especially when they come teenagers, they have questions and they have doubts about many things. But one thing it, it remains, and every, this one thing is that you must love them through their doubts. It might be true that sometimes they are questioning God, they are questioning everything that is around them because of the influences that they are finding outside. Yours as a parent is to pray for them, is to support them with the word of God, and don't, don't, be, don't treat them as unbelievers but have patience with them. Show them love. And the God who has saved you and has kept you this far is going to be the same to them. Amen. Don't be upset when they, ex they express their doubts. It is when they will establish their own faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. In doing so, Bazalwane, we are cultivating a generation of believers that are firm in the word of God, that have chosen Christ for themselves, and that are very strong in their faith. Amen. We are building a generation with Nehengane Zed to that the inheritance that we are, they are also an inheritance. They will also be we are raising citizens for the world. We are raising citizens for the church. We are raising the next church, Bazalwane. We are partnering with God 
in cultivating a human and preparing them for the future. So this is not a burden. We have to understand that it is a blessing and God has trusted us with it. So with it, Bazalwane, I pray in the name of Jesus that as Jesus is our heritage, let us understand the assignment that had we have been given as to partner with Christ to prepare the next church, to prepare the future generation of the church and of the society. In Jesus' name, amen. Preachers around town. Just like there are three statements that uh, were so profound. Two of them: love your children through the adults, and partner with God in preparing the present and the future generation for the church, for society, and for the world. Isn't that powerful? That God is trusting us with children and we can't betray that trust come on let's put our hands together to that council I'm, hap I'm happy that it's not me who's saying that uh, it is God's servants amen God's anointed servants these, these guys are anointed how many of you believe that they have got a ministry they can deliver to this world. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. God has appointed them. All right. All right. Let's go for uh, the next one. Um, that would be um, Nonjabulo Koala, who will share with us the truth that God's word is our heritage. And we need to take it seriously. Amen. Let's put our hands together as she comes to minister. Wow. That's my daughter. We, 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 we fight. We fight most of the time. But today, we are good friends. Amen. Bless the Lord. Be greeted. Hallelujah. Uh, be greeted, saints, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I guess mine is not as difficult as fellow brethren because I'm going to be speaking briefly on... I'm going to be sp speaking briefly on God's word is our life-giving heritage. Uh, special greetings to Ubaba, Numa, and Geku Parasugetsu, the leadership of the church, the visitors, and all the saints in Jesus' name, amen. Mama Zuisa, can you help me? Can you read for me? Um, can you read for me? Our theme scripture is gonna be based on Psalms 119, verses 111, and Deuteronomy 8, verses three. Those are our, our theme scripture. So um, we're gonna build from there. Psalm 119, verse 111. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. Can you please read again? Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. Hallelujah. Amen. So in this verse, I would like us to consider a few things. David had found sensible pleasure. David had found what revived his heart. David had found what cheered his spirit. And the Bible says it was thy testimonies, God's mighty work, God's word, God's decrees, the book of the law. Hallelujah. So David is telling us that out of all the worth that he could have thought of, he had found his possession, and his portion was found in God. Hallelujah. The scriptures testify about Jesus Christ and his grace. 
They testify about the mind of God and God's will. So in this verse, we get to learn that we must make the word of God our wealth. Hallelujah. We must make the word of God our possession. Hallelujah. We must regard the word of God as what a rich man regards as his inheritance. So, and David, we can learn from David, David chose it as his portion and above all else. So it could be a portion, but there could be other things, but David chose it as the, his portion above, or, or above all else. As the word of God says, in the, as he said in, the, in, the, in Psalms 138 verse 2, God has lifted his weight above his name. It does not mean that God's name is lower or God's name can be, but it means God puts his, put, exalt his, way, his word and treat it with high regard. Hallelujah. So can you also go to Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that men shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Hallelujah. Provision is good. And as children of God, we have to have provision. But this scripture is emphasizing to us that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And this scripture is cautioning us that starvation in the spirit is less obvious. So this scripture is cautioning us to focus on what is important. Um, Paul says, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I understood like a child. But God knows when I became a man, I put away childish things. So the word of God will help us to put away childish things. Our miracles, your healing, your deliverance, your freedom is not in America, it's not in Zambia, it's not in Nigeria. It's in the word of God. It's in the word of God. Let us also rush through to the book of John, chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. As he spoke these words, verse 31, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. In the time we live in, we live in the times where people are portraying everything as something that can set you free. But the scripture is clear. The truth in the word of God is the only thing that can set you free. It can set you free from any turmoil. It can set you free from any confusion. It can set you free from any bondage, from any, from any limitation. The Bible is very clear. The word of God, the truth in the word of God will set you free. Hallelujah. Because we are sometimes we are tempted to look outside and see and people tell us this and this is what can be done. But the word of God is very clear. The truth will set you free. Hallelujah. In conclusion, I'd like us to read John 8 verses 36. Hallelujah. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Hallelujah. Can you repeat it again? Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. The, the Jesus here was declaring a statement of victory. He was not negotiating. He was not begging anyone. But he was telling us, if the Son of Man makes you free, you are free. So in this in this verse, I draw two conclusions. Two conclusions. The first conclusion is that from this verse, there are things that Jesus free you from when you come to him in his word. There are things that Jesus frees us from. And two, when Jesus frees you, the second conclusion is that there are things that Jesus free you to. And those things are found in God's living word, our heritage. God bless you.
things that Jesus frees you from and there are things that Jesus frees you to and they are found in his way. What a statement. You know, you never stop learning in this business. Things that Jesus frees you for. Because sometimes that we might think that's all that there is to be freed from. But not to be freed towards. Yeah, of course he can take away sins, but he may do nothing after that. God himself lifts his word above all else. And so do not equate God's word with anything. If God himself regards his word, don't equate his word to anything. Ah, that's very powerful. As a rich man values his wealth, so must you value God's word. And don't generalize and make it as one of your portions but lift it above your portions. That's powerful stuff. Amen. Now, I'm sure you've, you've realized if you do, that's one part in my walk with the Lord that I love most, the word of God. And if you internalize it, you can never be the same. Never ever. It just turns on the inside of you. And then that's what Jeremiah says, I've taken a word in my mouth it was what it was bitter and in my belly it became a purgative it started turning me you don't take this word and remain the same never ever it will transform your tongue transform your whole being and functionality god bless you and then we have uh, uh, brother lubisi who's going to talk to us about God's heritage being what he blesses us with exclusively. Come forward, please, servant of God. Let's put our hands together for this powerful minister. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's clap hands for Jesus again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, greetings, Dad. Greetings to the church at large. Can we clap hands for my fellow, the people who came here to share again? Uh, what a beautiful time to celebrate our heritage. Most importantly, to celebrate our heritage, the heritage that we have in Christ. Hallelujah. Now, uh, the subtopic I'm to talk about today um, is believers are beneficiaries of God's exclusive, someone says exclusive, 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 exclusive heritage. Can we open Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17? Two point is we should know that. So, Isaiah 54 verse 17, Uti, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness of me, saith the Lord. Now this scripture is written in Isaiah in the Old Testament, but also John affirms it in the, best, in the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, and says, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Now, there's a thing about our heritage. Our heritage ensures us victory. So part of our heritage, part of who we are, is that we are victorious people. Heritage, Mazalon, is something that is offered to us or that comes to us by reason of birth. It's not something that you earn. If you are Zulu, you are Zulu because you were born from Zulu parents. 
I'm Swati. I am Swati because I've been born by Swati parents. Nicodemus in the book of John chapter 3 comes to Jesus later on the day. He says, teacher, we know that you are from God because we see all of these works. Jesus says to him directly, he says, unless you are born again, you cannot firstly see the kingdom of God. Number two, he says, unless you are born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Meaning only those who are born again can see. Only those who are born again can enter. The kingdom of God is, is exclusive to those who are born again. So, Basalone, the heritage, the exclusive gift. Paul says the kingdom of God is not a matter of drinking or eating, but the kingdom of God is peace. The kingdom of God, oh, the kingdom of God is righteousness. The kingdom of God is peace. And the kingdom of God is joy in the Holy Ghost. So unless you are born again, you can't claim righteousness as your heritage. Unless you are born again, you cannot claim peace that surpasses all understanding as your heritage. Unless you are born again, you cannot claim joy in the Holy Ghost as your heritage. So we bless God that we have been born again. He has given us the power to become his children. Hallelujah. And now Peter, in his epistles, he, he writes two letters, first and second Peter. He says to the saints that have been scattered abroad because of persecution. These are saints who have been persecuted and were running away and going to locate in different areas. He's writing to them about this issue of being born again. He says, blessed be the God, First Peter chapter 1, uh, verse 3. He says, blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who through his great mercy, someone say great mercy, great mercy. has caused us to be born again. Oh, hallelujah. He has caused us to be born again through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Verse 4 says, so that we may obtain. He has caused us to be born again so that we may obtain. Hallelujah. We are born again so that we may obtain an inheritance. This inheritance, number one, is imperishable. incorruptible. Knowing also that in some verse in that chapter, that you were, bought, you were bought not by perishable things like silver and gold. You were born by the blood of Jesus Christ. So our value is attached in the fact that we were born because of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And this inheritance, Barcelona, is imperishable. It's undefiled. It does not fade away. As silver and gold does. It is reserved for us in heaven. Hallelujah. And then Peter, as I said, Bazalani was writing to saints that were scattered abroad, who were considered as strangers and aliens wherever they were stationed at. Let's go to first Peter chapter two, verse nine. The saints Utu Peter verse chapter one. They were facing various trials, the trials of their faith. He is encouraging them. He's staring them by way of reminder. He's saying to them, First Peter chapter two verse nine, even though you are facing persecution, even though perhaps your heritage, your earthly heritage, wherever you are, is unknown, or maybe uh, it's taken for granted, remember that you have a heavenly heritage. There's a heritage that is unique to you, even though you have been scattered and are aliens and are strangers. But you are a chosen generation, a chosen people, a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood, king priest. You are a holy nation, a holy nation, unique people, set apart people. You are a peculiar people that ye should, should he, even though you are aliens, only you should. Only you qualify. 
to, to tell forth the praises. Oh my God. Let me read my version. You are a chosen people, number one. You are king priests. You are a holy nation. A holy nation is a unique nation, such a part nation. You are God's possession. So that you may proclaim, tell forth the excellencies. Fundis spoke about excellencies. The wonderful deeds and display them. So Barcelona, even though they are alienated, they are, on, they are the only ones wherever they are that qualify to display, to tell forth, and to proclaim the praises of his excellencies. They may be considered aliens, but they are the only ones that qualify. Hallelujah. And then Paul, this is Peter, that was Peter, and then Paul says in Colossians chapter 1, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. Now Paul was a guy who was proud of his Hebrew heritage. But he's saying to this church of Gentiles, together with them, he himself and Gentiles, he has been qualified to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified, someone say qualified, Meaning that we were previously unqualified. Sin qualified Adam and Eve. They were taken out of the garden. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. Uh, 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 we have all fallen short of the glory of God. So sin disqualified us. Secondly, the law itself disqualified us. It disqualified the Jews because they couldn't keep it. It disqualified us as well because we are Gentiles. God had chosen to use, to use Israel. But we thank God that he has qualified us. Or to Galatians chapter 3, also writing to Gentiles. Chapter 3, verse 13. Or to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. For cursed, Christ became a curse for us. For it is written in the law. Cursed is the one who hangs on the tree. There's a reason for that. Chapter 14. Chapter 3, 14. Chapter 3, 13. Uti Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, he became a curse for us. For it is written, everyone who hangs in a tree is cursed. Number 14. And, and the purpose that he hanged, the purpose of him being, being a curse for us was so that the blessing, Fundis was teaching us about being engrafted, that Abraham will come to the Gentiles who were previously disqualified, may come to the Gentiles in faith so that the promise, the, so that the promise of the Spirit may come to us as well so that we may receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Someone say Spirit. Let's go to Romans. Romans. This is very exciting, Pela, in the heritage. Romans chapter 8, verse 15 to 16. The Spirit, the promise we, we, we have received now as Gentile, the Spirit. King James Version. <laughs> For you have received, you have not received a spirit of slavery to fear again. And it's, we, we, we once feared because we were disqualified because we are Gentiles. Or to Paul reminding them, he says, you have, you have not received the spirit to fear again. You are legitimate children of God. So you can't fear you're not a slave again. But you have received, someone say received, a spirit of adoption, of belonging, a sons, by which you cry out and say, Abba, 
You speak to God with an endearment term. You say, Abba. You are legitimate children because you have the spirit. You have received the spirit. Hallelujah. Now the spirit is the mark. The spirit is the seal of our sonship. We don't compromise. We are legitimate children. We can come to God as a father. That is our heritage. And then I'm closing now. Romans. Okay, so verse 16 and then I'm sitting down. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that indeed we are children. Verse 17. And if children, oh my God, and if children, we are therefore heirs. And if heirs, of God and co-heirs with Christ. Hallelujah. So we are also elevated to the level of being co-heirs with Christ. Hallelujah. Let's clap hands for Jesus. comment. I think there's a there's a preacher in this young man. Yeah, it's filled with absolute revelation. Uh, exposure, I'm They've been hiding here and, and sitting around and causing us a lot of work. They are going to work now. Bless the Lord. Amen. We are going to have uh, the leader of the youth coming to, to, to wind up. Uh, he's the one who prepared the team. Let's put our hands together for him. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, greetings, church, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, we were going to be very brief. Uh, greetings, Dad. And thank you very much for, <laughs> for the opportunity and uh, the leadership of the church and uh, um, everyone present in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> we want to just wrap up and talk to um, this uh, uh, theme as we wrap up in this uh, service. How do we maximize the heritage of generational impact? Um, when God, and perhaps let us start in this manner, that God is generational in his approach. He's God of generations not the legacy that we, we see on TV by Mfundi Vundla, but God is the God of generations. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of, uh, and so the base of, of, of what we want to talk to is Psalm 78, Judges 2, um, verse 8 to 10, as well as Isaiah 58, verse 14. We won't read all of these scriptures. We just want to summarize everything that has been powerfully, powerfully conveyed to us. Amen. And so God is the God of generations. You know, he has chosen out of his own wisdom that he will work out his plans through generations. The Bible says in the book of uh, Exodus 6, verse 3, he says to Moses, I appeared to Abraham. I appeared to Isaac, and I also appeared to Jacob. And when I appeared to them, I appear to them as El Shaddai, the multi one, the God who's almighty. He said, now I want to appear to you. I want to bring another side of me that will cause you to be impactful in your generation. So God is generational in his approach. He looks for a man. He looks for a woman, little girl, or a child, or whoever, that he can express himself because this whole idea of impact, in a nutshell, it speaks to you and me allowing God to express himself in our generation. Hallelujah. In other words, giving God a moment, giving God yourself for him to be seen in your days. Amen. Number two, so important is this 
that even in this dispensation of the Holy Spirit, where God is so powerfully outpoured his spirit upon us as people in the church. You see, the Bible says when Peter is standing, uh, these guys are marveled at what is happening. He says, we are not drunk as you perhaps might perceive. He says, this is a prophecy. The Bible says when he was ministering, the Bible says they were caught in their hearts. They asked a, a question, what shall we do? And then he says, repent, because what you see is not exclusive to us. It can be experienced by you. Not only is he saying that, he says, this won't be your experience only, but also your children. So the Spirit of God in his approach as well, he is generational. I want to propose to all of us that, as a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit is the chief facilitator of generational impact. Outside of his activities, we are lowered in terms of us being effective and being impactful. He's, he's, he's the main person in the equation of generational impact. Hallelujah. And so I want to, to, to propose this as we, as we close, as we... The Bible says uh, in the book of uh, Psalms 145, if you can just project that quickly, verse 4. Psalms 145, verse 4. Um, the Bible says, One generation will declare your works to the next. You see, what screams out, out of that portion of scripture for me is responsibility. God is saying that I will, not I will, I will delegate this responsibility of telling my works to a next generation, to a generation. In other words, uh, let, let us quickly go to uh, also uh, verse, uh, chapter 44, verse 1. I want just to combine these two. The Bible says, we have heard with our ears, O oh God, our fathers have told us the deeds you did in their days. So God is saying that a generation has a responsibility to tell another generation. We cannot delegate a responsibility of impact. When God advances to us heritages, inheritances, he's entrusting us with things that will cause us to be impactful in our generation. So these guys, they, they are saying, we have heard with our ears. Our fathers have told us. In other words, they did not withhold. Paul says, I did not withhold that which I knew will be profitable to you. So you and me are, are charged to never withhold that which will platform and cause the next generation to use that as a lodging pad for their impact. In other words, when, when Utata gives me certain things for my generation, he gives me a platform, a base, a lodging pad for me not to start all over again but to launch further, because God is generational. Hallelujah. So it's important this morning that as God is telling us with all of these privileges and inheritances that we are exposed to, we must embrace the fact that God wants us to be responsible. In other words, we are entrusted with, with inheritances that we must pass on to the next generation. The Bible says, scripture that Tutata has, has quoted, David is about to die. He says to, to Solomon, Chief, I'm going now. I'm about to go. I'm about to go. And he says to him, he says something that is very powerful. First, first Kings, I believe, chapter 2, verse 2. He says to him, so powerful and so and so... The, 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 the magnitude of the responsibility that you now have is so huge. He says to him, be courageous. And he says one thing that is so powerful. He says, be a man. He says, be a man. The, the, the magnitude of the thing that I, I'm transferring to you does not need, respectfully, any ceases. You have got to embrace this responsibility and be a man. Mature. 
because you are about to impact your generation. So you, you can't afford to be a sissy. You cannot afford to be infantile. You cannot afford to reduce yourself into someone who's not understanding that there is a, the magnitude of what I've been given. is so huge. So, be a man. This is not, um, you know, gender sensitive or whatever the case may be, but it speaks to maturity. Be matured. People who are matured are people who understand responsibility. We are not here to impact our generation out of convenience. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Whether you like it or not, it, this is not a business of convenience. It's a business that has been charged by God in heaven. When he entrusts you with inherit inheritances, he's not saying to you, be wishy-washy about what you have been given. He's saying, be matured, be a man, because there are things I've entrusted you with. Hallelujah. And so as we sit down and we pray, it's possible for a generation to miss their opportunity to be impactful. The Bible says in the book of Judges, chapter 2, from verse 8 to 10, there was a generation after Joshua who arose, but they did not know God. And also they did, they did not know his ways. Uh, Damien would have been uh, excited as a gentleman. I think when they're doing umkhabulu and stuff, they usually caught him. I think it's Fanon who says that uh, a generation must discover their mission. Uh, once they've discovered it, discovered it, they have a choice whether to betray it or to fulfill it. You know, out of relative obscurity, he says, they must discover their mission and begin to express it. Damien would have said, "Amen," because he's a he's a comrade. Amen. And so and so and and, and so it's it's important that scripture communicates to us that it is possible for a generation to miss it. God has availed his inheritances, has availed the heritages towards me and you, but we choose not to be found in the activities that God... By the way, God has always wanted to, to be around the history of man. He wants to be seen in the history of man. But it's you and me to embrace that which he has given us. And so as I sit down... Let us just read uh, Psalms uh, 78. The Bible says from verse 2, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which you have heard and known, and our, and our fathers have told us. Verse 4 says, we will not hide them from our children or from their children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord, his strength and his wonderful acts that he has done. There's nothing that we are going to withhold. This morning, the Lord is charging you and me, choose not to withhold the things that will platform the next generation for impact. And so as Paul would say in the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 8, he says that uh, uh, all, all, all men nothing except to love them. And I want to propose to all of, all of us this morning that you and me, Oh, our generation, God. That's what we know. Isn't God good? Oh, your generation, God. Paul says, Oh, no man except love. And if that love is not spoken into by God Himself, it is not love at all. We are now going to pray, and we are reminded that let's support them, the youth, uh, as they are going to go through to conference, and they are going to talk about these things of impact. Their theme for the year has been impact. And we want them to be generational impactors. Amen? And as we conclude these beautiful uh, insights on our heritage, that God spoke to us through his servants about to, to this morning into 
the encroaching afternoon. Please take something out of this and see in which area do you need to maximize your potency in God's things. Is it in the area of children, how you bring them up? Is it in the area of knowing the life-changing word so that your life will never be the same again? Is it in the area of loving people as God loves them? Is it in the area of knowing that there are things that exclusively belong to you and they are not going to compromise your value-added significance with God? It's not man-made. It is God-given and governed. And so you and I need to just dive into that. It's important. Don't compromise and don't feel for God. He must feel for himself. The Bible says he has lavishly granted us his grace. The other explanation of the word lavish is extravagantly. This is where God decided to be wasteful in releasing his grace upon us because he wants us to experience his fullness fullness with your family fullness in your career fullness in your walk with god in your calling fullness in your prayer life fullness in the life of victory fullness in the life of impact and leadership fullness in spatial and situational effectiveness God has designed us to be his representative. And he has not released us to be empty. He has given us an assured inheritance. Signed off in the blood of the Lamb of God that speaks better things. The will of God is signed through the blood of Jesus. The will of God has been made available to us through his resurrection. But he wouldn't have resurrected if he did not die. And by dying, any will becomes effective. And by rising, he is ensuring that this will comes to effect. He's not only the one who authors it, but he's the one who supervises its implementation. Child of God, you've got absolutely no reason to live a life that is less than how God sees it. That's why David says, the saints upon the earth are the most excellent ones. See yourself as excelled by God, privileged by God, loved by God, preferred by God, thought of by God like no other person can ever do it. It's important for you to start seeing yourself through the finished work of Calvary. It's important for you to take the word of God and make it the mirror against which you'll see the true image of what God sees in you. Start believing in you as God believes in you. Start thinking about yourself as God thinks about you. The Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Let those thoughts be your thoughts in Jesus' mighty name.